but when I when I see the park the pools, um, are they just overflowing with people that they're at capacity and people are waiting in line to get in? Yes, there yeah. is a restriction on, and that's during the summer programs right. primarily. Uh, there is a restriction of capacity. And so there's a justification of, of why it's number one. You have, you know, a huge population of people that are using the pools, and they get to a certain point. And yes. They need an extra. Pool. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because there that, is. that kind of balances things. If it's number one, and we do have so many kids there, you can actually back it up with statistical numbers saying yes, we're at capacity. So right, you and you have that at some of your pools. You have others that not so much, and yeah. so which is interesting to me, like. Um, Inner city, I can tell you right now. Yes, yeah. inner city is one of them, but you go to North Central and it's packed because we also have the swim team there. And we have swim team at inner city. Sure. And we expanded the swim team at Del Mar and also at Haynes because we only had one swim team. Now we've got four yeah. and another one on the way. So. When well, inner city is not really fair because it's deep. So yes. the little kids can't. That's right. Not, so that's not fair to. True. Yeah. But you get a lot, we're doing a lot of uh, uh, senior classes, adult classes. We just implemented our. our senior aquatics uh four people from our rec centers our senior uh, centers nice. so we're busing them and so they're coming to that and they're they're freaking out you know they live down here one of the groups is down here downtown and nice. so we're busing and we did, we did that last weekend and they were just like wow this is amazing i guess they've never swam before that's awesome like haynes uh at the at the haynes rec center right um the hours of operation are from like two in the afternoon to like seven at night. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I don't use it because I'd like to go early in the morning, but it's not available in the morning. It's uh, If you're looking at year round, it's not a heated pool. Uh, that's one of the last pools that I wanted to heat and the cost is exorbitant mm -hmm. because I'd have to push those lines all the way from, there. there's no area for me to get the lines from the gas lines. Mm -hmm. And so we'd have to extend them uh, and so I want to say it was going to cost me like fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars to put a heater in that just to, for the lines, and then I have to pay for the equipment. So it's on my list without a doubt. Um, but I thought I would do it next budget. You know, wait until I get more. So, ready. so the reason the hours of operation aren't earlier is because of it's not heated. Is that the? Uh, in your in some of the pools, y it just depends on which area you're looking at and what is the use of the pool. Mm -hmm. And so we determine uh, what are our numbers. You know, and if um, obviously if the pool is not heated, you don't want to open it at six o'clock in the morning. You know, but Bartlett, on the other hand, is heated, and we've implemented several classes. And I have this gentleman who calls me. It's not eighty-seven degrees. Well, it's working on it. <laughs> you know, it's a weekend and and what have you. And and so Monday morning he calls me, and so but then you have Inner City where. The adults want 87, the swim team wants 85. And it <laughs> takes a long time to get that water up three degrees. Wow. And so you have issues. With, so that's, that's another thing that you're looking at. What is the use of the pool? Is it for swimming teams? Is it for older people? Is it for young kids? And, and so that also determines what are the hours of the pool. But you know, we always try to make sure that we expand some pools at, at more hours. You know, Some pools do open in the morning. And so just not all of them. Like some of our rec centers, we have some of them opening up at 545. We have others opening up at 3 o'clock. It just depends on the demographics and what he said, you know, when you open early, you're stuck opening early. It's not a matter of a test situation because once you open, you have 10 people coming, you close, oh, those 10 people are going to be calling. You see? So we have to make sure that we can sustain that, period, you know, from now until infinity. I, I was going to, I was going to, my question to them was, excuse me? Do you have an item for next meeting? That's what I was going to say. I was going to ask for numbers for the next meeting about the pools, but you kind of answered my question. So, but the other one would be. I can get you uh, exact numbers. Okay, and then uh, Thomas Pool. Can we get an update on that? What's going to happen with Thomas Pool? Along the base. Yes. Uh, you don't have to answer now. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to renovate. That's what I hear. That's what I want to hear. Okay. I'd love to do it. I, 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 hope somebody to do can, it. I hope somebody can get me the money to do it. <laughs> to do it. We're going to do it. Fund me. You got a checkbook for it? Sure. There you go. You <laughs> got this. Because it's such a shame to have yeah. such a huge facility and 
but it was allowed to deteriorate so much. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's antiquated, obviously. But I will get you a price for the next meeting on Thomas Paul. We had done some um, informal. Okay. You know. I have one item. That's it. That was brought up at the last uh, meeting, and uh, Mercurio Martinez asked me to just throw it out there to see if there's if, how the process can you know be done or or talked about as far as uh, developers and that uh, keeping it under 150 lots and they don't have to do the park deal um, if if it could be if there's any interest in changing that to where uh, as as the development progressed a percentage of instead of doing it by you know 150 lots maybe if you do 20 percent of the lots for the development 20 percent of the money goes to parks and rec uh, so that there's not that loophole where you know they're they're not having to put in the park and then at the end phase eight or phase nine they decide well we're not going to do phase eight or phase nine and the park never gets built uh, he's concerned that there's there's residential neighborhoods where the park was never built and um, if there was a way to get around that loophole so it's just something that you said for me to bring up I think that's I'm sorry if I may um, I think that's one of the um, the areas that part of the master plan is going to um, address. address and provide some type of recommendation uh, not necessarily to um, make it um, like to obligate but just a recommendation so that we can process an amendment to the ordinance mm -hmm. uh, and, and present to council with all those uh, recommendations. That's the process that we would need to follow. Like we would need to amend mm -hmm. our current ordinance. And, and for that, um, a good recommendation ba based on the way other cities work, based on the, uh, um, I guess, um, statistics that we have on the number of uh, neighborhoods in Laredo without uh, um, the development of the park prior to setting up the entire subdivision. All of that can be considered and put together for a council to to approve an amendment okay. to the ordinance. Are there any other items for next meeting? Just the one item, if, if it's possible to find out if certain park land could be sold and the money is used towards the construction of a park or or the development towards park you know services or something like that um, if legal could legal. Mm -hmm. let us know do we have a motion for adjournment <laughs> make a motion to the agent is there a second second all those in favor all, right. all those opposed so we can keep talking, but um, since there's no action items, I was just told it doesn't have to be on the record because there's no action items. Okay. I want to say. So you can. So we can. Have <laughs>